Okay, we're going to take a look at Spider, the editor for Python, for Anaconda Python. Go to your start button, and uh, there should be an Anaconda 3 here, uh, either 32 or 64 bit, and uh, choose Anaconda Navigator. And you may get a command window or two uh, with a black background here that opens up as we're going through the opening process, but eventually we should get to Spider. Spider is called an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. Uh, it's more than just an editor. It lets you uh, run programs, debug programs, uh, in addition just to writing the code. Okay, so now we're going to launch Spider. And again, you'll probably get some windows opening up here. Uh, don't worry about them, just disregard them. And eventually we'll get our little splash screen for Spider. And this is what Spider looks like. And I'm not going to upgrade right now. And I've got a missing dependency here. Uh, I am going to disregard that. It still appears to work. And I'm not sure why that happened. It seems like that should have been part of the installation process. Um, and we have... Um, Two parts we're going to spend most of our time in here. Over here on the left is when you write a program, uh, this is your editor, and this is where you'll write the program. Over here, we've got an interactive window called console, and you can have multiple consoles open, and you'll get a green prompt with a number in square brackets and a colon, and this is where you can type in a single command and have it executed by the Python interpreter. So we are going to check out the data types in Python. Python has four basic data types, which most programming languages have. And the first one is the integer data type. And I'm going to uh, provide an integer here. And what we're doing is there's a built-in function. That's a series of instructions in Python. So uh, given a name. And uh, we're going to execute those instructions. And we're sending in the number five. We're saying, what type is the number five? And it's going to come back and tell us that that's an integer. Uh, in Python, it abbreviates that to int. Now we're going to do another type command. And this time I'm passing what looks like the same number, but it's got a decimal point in it. And when I hit the enter key on this one, uh, it comes back and tells me that that is a floating point number, which is uh, basically Python's way of saying that it's a number that has a decimal point in it. Uh, and it does make a difference. Uh, between the integer data type and the floating point data type. Uh, floating point data types is, is any number that has a decimal point in it. Uh, you could have a zero to the right of it, but you can also have any kind of fractional part over there that you want. They are stored differently inside the computer. We don't need to worry about that in this class, but they are stored in a different format. So they are two different data types, even though they both look pretty much the same. Uh, now, uh, we're going to take that floating point number and we're going to put quotation marks around it and ask Python what type that is. And it comes back and tells us str, which is an abbreviation for string, which is short for character string because it's a string of characters. Now, that looks an awful lot like the second line that we typed in except for the quotation marks. It is not a number. You can't do arithmetic on it without converting it into either an integer or a floating point number first. Um, a string in most programming languages is just a sequence of characters. And you can put, you know, normally, you know, it's not numbers that you put in there. Normally you'd put, you know, names and addresses and, and uh, textual data like that. But uh, all three of those look the same, but there is a big difference. A number without quotation marks and without a decimal point is an integer. A number with a decimal point is a floating point number, and a anything with quotation marks around it, whether it looks like a number or not, uh, is a character string. 
And the fourth basic or primitive data type in Python, uh, I'm going to pass it in the value true with a capital T and hit enter. And it comes back and it says bool, which is short for Boolean. Uh, the Boolean, Boolean value is one of two things. It's either true or false. I'm going to do another type. I'm going to type in false with a capital F and it comes back and tells me that's Boolean. The only two values that will ever come back uh, as Boolean are true and false with a capital T and a capital F. If I change the capitalization, that is not the same. Notice it doesn't turn purple. And it comes back and it says, don't know what that is. It's not defined. If you cap capitalize the T, it is defined. Uh, if you don't, it doesn't know what it is. And any other combination of upper and lowercase letters uh, with the word true um, is also going to get you the same error. Whoops. Now, I'm putting true inside of quotation marks. And you should know from what we talked about above that that is going to return the type string. So anything inside of quotation marks, even if it looks like something else, uh, is always considered a string. So those are the four primitive data types in Python. If you just type in an integer and hit the enter key, it just comes back and gives you the number. Uh, you don't put commas in. Uh, if you do, Python will let you get away with that. Um, but it comes back with something different, and we're not going to worry about that until we're quite a bit further on in the course. So do not put commas in between uh, parts of a number to make it easier to read. If you do want to make it easier to read, um, this is kind of unusual. You don't see this uh, outside of programming language, but you can put an underscore in there, and um, that underscore does one thing. It does the same thing that a comma does um, you know, in normal text, and it puts a little separation in there, making it a little bit easier to read. So if you've got a six-digit number like that, uh, it's nice to have the little separator in there after uh, the third, between the third and the fourth digits. Okay. Floating point numbers, uh, anything with a decimal point in it, and it will just come back. It doesn't say the type because I didn't ask it for the type. If you just type in a value, it always comes back with the value. If I type in uh, true with a capital T, it comes back with true. If I type in my first name with quotation marks around, it comes back. And it replaces the double quotation marks with single quotation marks. Uh, either one is acceptable for delimiting a string in Python. Okay. And um, even if the fractional part is zero, if there's a decimal point in the number like there is up here on this line, uh, it is still considered a floating point number. It does not have to have a non-zero fractional part. Okay. So there are a couple of ways that we can delimit strings. Um, we just did uh, the quotation marks and apostrophes above. Uh, if I type the same thing in with apostrophes around it, uh, it comes back just as I typed it in. Uh, we've also got some special ones here that we'll talk about uh, before long. You can put three quotation or three apostrophes or three quotation marks around it. And uh, those are used for special um, special purposes. Uh, most of the time when you do a string, you're just going to put quotation marks or apostrophes around it. But the triple ones come in handy. Okay. Now we're looking at some other values here. Uh, I'm going to type in one is less than two. I don't have to put the spaces around it, but it's easier to read if you do. Uh, if I hit enter, uh, one is less than two. That's a true statement. So guess what comes back? That's a Boolean expression. It can be evaluated true or false. And if I do one is uh, greater than two, it's going to come back and say, no, that's not right. That's false. Okay. And notice it's capital T and a capital F. Uh, if I want to compare, uh, let's say one is uh, less than or equal to two, uh, that's the operator that I use, less than followed by an equal sign. Uh, they have to be in that order. You can't turn the equal sign and the greater or less than sign around. Uh, it also works the other way. If I want to say one is greater than or equal to two, I should get false back for that. Now, if I want to compare and see if one is equal to two, 
Um, actually, I'll, I'll just do one equal sign here. We'll see what happens. Um, again, error. And uh, we're not going to worry about what a literal is or assigning a, a value to a literal means right now. Um, but if you want to compare, uh, you have to do two equal signs. And that takes a little getting used to. Um, but, you know, a couple weeks from now, uh, you'll be doing it without thinking. So uh, that says, is one equal to the number two? And it comes back and says, no, it's not. So that's false. Is one equal to one? Um, that comes back and true. Let's see what happens if we say is one equal to 1.0 and hit enter. And uh, it does allow you to compare uh, integers and floating point numbers. Uh, the not equal operator looks a little funny as well. Uh, one is not equal to two. It's an exclamation part point followed by an equal sign. So one is not equal to two is a Boolean value. And that is also true. Okay. Now we're going to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, we're going to do one is less than one, which is false. And an and, and, you notice it turns that purple. That means it means something special in Python. Two is less than three. So I'm saying is one less than one and is two less than three. Well, two is less than three, but one is not less than one. And the word and means both. So I want to know, are both of these true? And they are not. Uh, the first one is false. The second one is true, but and means both. Okay. Now, if I do one is less than two and two is less than three, uh, the first part is true. The second part is true and means both. Are they both true? And the answer is yes, they are. So um, anytime you use and to combine two Boolean values. One is less than one is a Boolean value. Two is less than three is a Boolean value. They will either be true or false. And if you put the word and in between, they both must be true in order for that expression to be considered true. Uh, if either one of them is false or if both of them are false, um, then you get a value of false return. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at uh, some other ones. Uh, the other one uh, for connecting Boolean values is uh, the word or. One is less than two or two is less than three. Well, they're both true. Or means either one. They're both true. Um, so obviously uh, the entire Boolean expression is considered true. Now let's try one is less than two or three is less than two. Well, the second part of that is false, but the first part is true. And or means either one. So if the first one is true, then the whole thing is considered true. Um, if we um, do the first one false, three is, let's turn these around, less than two, or one is less than two. Uh, well, the second part of that is true, so I'm going to get true for the result of that. The only way I get false is if both expressions are false. So if I say is one greater than two or two greater than three, uh, the first one is false, the second one is false, and so the entire Boolean expression is considered false. Okay. There is also a not operator. Um, if I have a Boolean expression, actually, I'm just going to put true here. Um, so that takes the opposite of whatever is inside the parentheses. Well, the opposite of true is false. So that evaluates to false. If I do not false, it's going to give me the opposite of what's in parentheses there, and I'm going to get true. And you're not going to put the value true or the value false in there most of the time. Uh, what you're going to do instead is you're going to put a Boolean expression. So if I do not, one is greater than two. Well, one is greater than two is false. So I want to know, you know, the opposite of false, and it comes back true. If I say not, uh, one is less than two, well, that's true. And not true is false. So um, using ands and ors and Boolean expressions uh, like we've been using on the last few lines here uh, is really useful in Python when you want to make decisions. And making decisions is a fundamental part of writing programs. Okay. So that's a good place to stop with our first video. And we'll continue with uh, variables and assignment statements in the next video.